Well, we've got all day tomorrow or whatever you want to do. How, lo how loud will that be with rain in there? That's my concern. No, but it, it's not going to rain during the day. It, it rains at night. It's stopped now. <laughs> you'll, be, I'll be, you'll be in your shorts and, sleet and <laughs> swimsuits. Barn Find Hunter is in the UK. We're in this beautiful setting here. A farm, well, I guess surrounded by cities. London's not too far away. And I'm with my friend Simon Lane. Simon, thanks for getting up, coming out here early. Okay, no problem. You've, you've heard me mention Bernie a few times. Uh, you'll meet Bernie later today or tomorrow or something. But Simon is one of Bernie's friends, and Bernie has a storage building here, and Simon keeps a couple of interesting cars there. So we're going to see Simon's cars here today and hopefully go to his house tomorrow, and you'll see other interesting cars he's got there. So let's get out of this wind. So some of these cars are Bernie's, some are Simon's. We just walked through a BMW repair shop, so they rent the back part of a BMW repair shop. The cars that we're concerned with here are Simon's cars, which again, we're not, <laughs> we're in the UK. Where's the Lotuses? Now there's Camaros here uh, and Fords. So what's the story with this car? This, this is a car you've raced in the States, I think. Uh, several times in the States. I bought it over here in 2000, just as a shell. It was, they, somebody had started building a race car out of it, but uh, it hadn't been until then. I think it was imported into the UK about 1985, something like that. But and what I year bought is this it, car? 68, this 68, is. Okay. So I bought it in 2000 and it's just, it doesn't comply with any sort of FIA or anything. I just make it as quick as I can and it's got a 436 alley, aluminium, aluminum small block in it. And, a 436 uh, small block? Yeah. That's a board and stroke. Yeah. But aluminum block? Yeah. And uh, it's about 610 horsepower and, uh, and it blows the cobwebs away. Man, both so, in your uh, mind and the yeah, cars. Yeah, exactly. Man, so 610 horsepower. It's got a four-speed? Uh, four-speed, um, yes. Uh, it's a straight-cut uh, dog box, race box. and. Uh, Man, so did you build this mechanically yourself? You yeah. Do your own motors? Yeah, completely. Lift her up. So it's a world product. Never heard of it. Oh, they're pretty famous. Really? Okay. Yeah, so. And so Chevy to Ford, this is your car as well. That's mine as well. I bought that. To, that was supposedly a project with three of us, and uh, the other two slowly but surely backed out, so I inherited the whole thing. I've actually got about 90% of the car, engine, trans, axle. What motor would you have in this? Uh, it's a 289. This will be... Um, very much FIA compliant, so really period. So metal fenders, metal trunk? Uh, metal. No, the Falcon, because the Falcon was raced in the day by Alan Mann and so on, um, they homologated this with glass fenders, glass doors, and a 980 kilogram weight limit, which is what, 2,200 2, pounds mm -hmm. hmm. as a weight limit. and. Uh, we're allowed to do that even now, so everybody goes for one of these instead of a Mustang because they have to be they have advantages. about 1,200 kilos. So there's, there's only probably one person on earth who's ever made one of these 980 kilos. Ford never did back in the day. It's just, I don't know how they did it, but they did. So did, can, do you have to run drum brakes on here? No, uh, discs on the front, drums on the, bra on the okay, back. Okay. There's almost no rust and almost no damage. There's a few, few small dings that were mm -hmm. obviously came off when they stripped it. But uh, so this is a primer. That's just primed, yes. Okay. Um, so where does this fall into your project category? Well, there's my poor little old pickup over there, which is um, ahead of this and uh, I've got a 32 Cabriolet which is ahead of this and a Model A Roadster which is ahead of this so I shall be about 109 when I get round to this one. Well, let's look at the Model A. Okay. Now the Model A, yes, poor little Model A. This has got a, um, actually got a, a 283 Chevy in it. This, ha this hasn't run for a very long time as you can see. It never was a show car. It was I'm not 
I'm not mad on the rat rod theme, but it was just a very, it was just a nice old car. Mm -hmm. um, that's a 57 block 283, which is about the newest part of the whole car, actually. Did you buy this so, in the States or here? Uh, the cab came from the States. It's a, it's a truly uh, intercontinental car, actually, because <laughs> things like the splash aprons and various other bits came from Australia. Uh, the cab came from a uh, dear late departed friend, Dick Spadero, in New York. And the rest of the car it was an English chassis, right-hand drive, etc. Um, so this was, a Chevy was put in here? Oh, I put the Chevy in. You put the in. Chevy in. Yeah. What kind of gearbox? Three-speed Lincoln Zephyr, close ratio box, early Ford rear. The, the undercarriage is all early V8 underneath. Mm -hmm. um, is it 29? 29, yeah. Okay. And I built it originally with a flathead V8 in it. Did you? Um, and then probably 20 years ago, I put the old Chevy in it. Fiberglass And uh, that's one, one fiberglass fender on the, that's the only fiberglass bit of the whole car. Oh, man. So, uh, so this was a driver. Did you, did you? Oh, yeah, certainly did. Yeah, we've, we've done a lot of miles in this in the past, but uh, not for a while. So how long has it been parked? Eight years, ten probably. Mm. How, did it, how did it deteriorate? Uh, it had to live outside for quite a long time yeah. in our glorious climate, mm -hmm. which you're experiencing today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were you selling these cars or not for sale? Nothing's for sale at all. No, okay. I don't think so. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> well, that's a neat car. So, um, this is a nice old car, and I always think that everybody should have a car like this so that they realize just how nice their modern cars are. Yeah, that's good. Because <laughs> this is hell on earth driving yeah. this. So, so uh, what we're going to try to do is magically take you to Simon's garage. So we're going to trans go from here to there. And just like that, we're, we're in different clothes, in a different garage, 10 miles from where we were, but uh, it's the, the, the magic of digital media. And so Simon wants to have time to get on his Camaro, wants to have time to get on the Falcon, wants to have time to get on his Model A truck. Why doesn't he have the time? Wanted to bring you over and show you the project he's currently working on. Tell us what this, what this is, Simon. Uh, right, it's a, a roadster that I built I started building in 1978 and put it on the road in about 82. 78. Yeah. Um, it had a blown, ordinary flathead, if you call that ordinary, a blown flathead. Um, and then I bought the Ardun motor from a pal of mine in the mid 80s. And uh, it sat in the corner of the garage ever since. And I vowed if I, when I put the car back on the road, I'd put the Ardun in it. And of um, March last year, I actually built the engine, dynoed it, and it's ready to go. And uh, there's a little bit of a story that actually goes with it when I first bought the car, or bought the engine, I mean, is that the valley cover gasket was actually made of newspapers. So I peeled them all apart and found the sports pages and identified four football players who played for only one season, 1954. You mean soccer players? Soccer players in England yep. from Newcastle or Manchester United or whatever. Um, 1954 that was, so that's not necessarily the last time the engine ran, but it's obviously uh, indicates that it really hadn't run for over 60 years at the time when I built it. So this is a Model it's A roaster? Model A, what year? 28. 28 with a, a deuce grill. Yeah. And it's a steel car? No, no, this is a fiberglass car, original 32 rails, um, early Ford underpinnings, really. Mm -hmm. um, a C4 automatic, which I built an adapter for in, in the 70s, mm -hmm. and had a ball with it. And then um, children came along and things, you know how the pesky things get in the way. So I'm just going to give a, a little history lesson on what Arden is all about. And, and the reason I, I really wanted to come here today is because these heads are so rare. In the five years we've done Barn Fine Hunter, we've never seen another set, I don't believe. There was a, a, a kind of a, a renowned engineer, automotive engineer, from, uh, I think, Russia. 
named Zora Arcus Duntov, who wound up becoming the father of the Corvette. Mm -hmm. And he's the guy that came up, didn't invent the Corvette, but he decided we can, we can develop this thing into a real sports car. So he took something that was kind of anemic, didn't handle particularly well, didn't have a lot of power, the 53 Corvette, the 54 Corvette. The 55 Corvette had a V8, prior ones had six cylinders with automatics. And he built it into a race car and, and developed the Stingray. And he actually, did he win Le Mans or he ran Le Mans? He ran Le Mans. Ran Le Mans yeah. back in the mm, 50s, maybe. <laughs> Late yeah, 50s. Or, or, yeah, something like that. I think, at a, I think at a Porsche, if I'm not mistaken. Arcus Duntov, A-R-D-U-N. It's, it's a, a, a combination of his, of his two names, Arcus Duntov. I think these were made in the UK, weren't they? They were, yeah. Which I can't figure out why they had New York on there. Some of them... There's, there's a number of different variations on a theme. Some of them have are done New York. Some of them actually have made in England as a casting as well. Ah. But, uh, mm. but, um, but they're, they, sort of, they, they were never very successful back in the day. Um, ignition was always a hell of a problem. Um, vertex magnetos were used to try and make them fire on more than three or four cylinders at a time. Um, but when they did run, they, uh, this is, um, it didn't, when I, I've built this with the blower on it, this is an English Marshall blower, which is date stamped 1950 on the back, ah, wow. just for, um, just to keep it period. Um, this is a uh, 100 horsepower flathead with 332 horsepower in it now. A flathead engine or an L head has a very inefficient design of, of fuel delivery and exhaust where the, the gas and the air has to make a right angle turn to, to go into the combustion chamber and then the exhaust has to make a right angle, right angle turn to come out and go out the exhaust pipes. What this does is convert a flathead or an L head engine to a push rod motor so it was a much more efficient flow of uh, gas and air in and exhaust out. So they're complicated. A Hemi they too. Are, a Hemi you? too. The Hemi engine, same thing. It yeah. is, no, this engine, is a yeah. Hemi engine. A Hemi engine. So he was predating this was, Chrysler. This would have been in the late 40s? 48. 48, yeah. okay. So, I mean, you have a rare, rare piece of equipment here for sure. And a blown, and you say 330 horsepower? Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. So here we are in jolly old England, and it looks like this could be in Southern California. Thank you so much. Well, it's a pleasure. Why don't, why don't you guys build real roads right here? I don't understand. So, we are now, you're getting closer to meet Bernie every day. Uh, this is a car that Bernie's niece bought 25 or 30 years ago. And it's been in a lockup for 20 years. The key has been changed. They had to get a locksmith to come open the garage. We're going to see this car. I mean, Bernie hasn't seen this car in decades. And uh, he just saw it for the first time. So now we're going to see it for the first time. So, tally ho! We're now going to meet Bernie, but first we're going to meet his sister, who's much better looking than he is. <laughs> so that's, I'm done. That's Valerie. Hi. And this is Bernie. And we're going to be spending a fair amount of time with Bernie over the next episode or two. But they keep Mabel, poor Mabel, locked up. Now, why would you keep Mabel locked up in a building? I, I'm so sad about that. Well, uh, my daughter bought Mabel maybe 30, 35 years ago. And it's all she could afford. And um, I named her Mabel because she had no idea. And I thought it was just befitting of her age. And by the way, Mabel and I aren't too far apart in in age oh. so well, i'll find out how <laughs> old you are 1928 <laughs> <laughs> wow okay anyway so she drove her for a great many years five six years and then she got married and mabel got married mabel got shoved in the garage and forgotten about well let's check let's check mabel out so you haven't seen mabel i haven't seen mabel in Oh, too many years. Hi, girl. Uh, oh, my goodness. Look at RMP that. 817. Yeah, I'd wow. forgotten that. So it's a split windscreen. Split screen, 
convertible. 1956 convertible. So this was last on the road in 98. 98, that's an English tax. 22 years. 22 years. And it's been in here ever since. Ever since, never ah. moved. So oh. what, what year is Mabel? This is 56. 56, okay. It's got the split windshield. Uh, some of the early Morris miners had a split windshield. Two flat pieces of glass, as opposed to the later ones had a curved piece of glass. What we call split screen. Split screen. Bernie, what can you tell us about this car? What do you know about it? Um, so when we got it, uh, I think it's pretty much as it was. I don't think we did any paintwork. No. Um, but we, I did put an MG midget engine in it, which is a 1275 engine, I believe, with a four-speed uh, to get it going. And it's uh, more of a modern engine. And it's sort of in tune with the car. And it's a fun little car, you know. It's quite a rare car in as much that uh, most of the cars that were built were all uh, two-door sedans or four-door sedans. This, this is actually a convertible. Split screen makes it sort of relatively rare. Um, it's a bit of an iconic car. I know they made millions, but there aren't really that many left. So in the, in the UK, this is a, a, a desirable car. On the lower end of the classic car scene, it's yeah. a desirable car. Right. You know, you've got people who want E-Types and Astons, and they won't have something like this, because it's got no real value. Yep. Um, but then the person who's the average guy is a postman, I don't know what he does, decorator, he can afford it. Mm -hmm. And why not? And if you can I mean, barely... we can drag this out if you want, it's up to you. I can take this out, we're happy for you if you want to get down the side. Yeah, we'll take this out, big deal. Take off the handbrake and pull. Who's standing there doing nothing? Right, OK. <laughs> right, OK. There you go. Two, three. Ah! No, it's not going <laughs> to. Well, it's locked. It's locked right. on. It's locked. And the drum brakes, I reckon it's locked on. Oh, off. yeah, they're frozen. All right, Bernie, I want you to give me a lesson, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like a vocabulary lesson. OK. What do you call this? Well, we're what English. Right, okay. No, no, no don't, let, let me explain. Oh, sorry. So, we're English, bit. right? You Americans have bastardised the English language. Absolutely. So this, this is a bonnet, it's not a hood. The hood is the top. <laughs> the top is not the bonnet. The only thing we've got in common is doors. Right, no, next. no, no, yeah, that's right. The, the bumpers, right. You, so you call them something different. So these are wings, not fenders. Wings, W-I-N-G-S. And the boot, what, what do we oh, call yes. the boots? The boots is the boots, well, not well, a trunk. Show them where the boot is. You can oh, come around it. the back. So have a look at the, <laughs> the boot. Right, so here's the boot. I don't know how you open it, but anyway. So the boot's there. What other things? Oh, here's something quite inter interesting. If you look down the other side, you call them, uh, what do you call them, flashers? Blinkers. 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 What's a flasher in America? Well, that's somebody who takes their clothes off. <laughs> well, it's the same over here, actually. All right. So if you we follow me. Indicators. We call them indicators. Oh. Oh, they're not here. So this would have had trafficators, which go up and down. So you, you turn the thing in the middle. can see it. Why don't you, you can't? We just yes, can come back here. Oh, here they are. I thought they're down here. Look, here you go. See? See those little things? So, on the steering wheel, you've got a little button that you turn to the left to the right. So, if you turn it to the left, that should come out. These are so crappy, there's no way they're going to work ever anyway. So, anyway, it's got them. So, what else can we tell you? Oh, yes. Yeah, so, these are, no, they're mirrors. So, you call these overriders. Uh, bumper, yeah. bumper guards? Oh, bumper guards, yeah. What do you call them? No, well, why do you call them bumper guards? Because it call... protects the bumper. No, why you, you call think? this thing a fender, don't you? Oh, oh that's a fender. Don't kick the this car. This is a fender. Yeah, oh, this, is a, this is a bumper. That's yeah. a bumper guard. So, oh, oh. Well, we have something. So yeah. see this. This is the AA badge, which is... You've got the triple A, we've got two A's. Of course, Americans have to add something. That's the, you can't add two A's, you've got to have three A's. But anyway... This is probably worth more than the car. <laughs> uh, no, it's not actually. It's worth about 30 what is bucks. This? Morris Minor. Morris Minor's Owners Club. Club, yeah. Well, I've got a compressor. We can maybe blow the tyres up and try and push it out. It may be that. 
Because you've got a flat one here and a flat one there. You want to try it? Or now, if, well, there's going to be four flowers. Do you have enough me. power in there? Yeah, yeah. Let's I'll give it a, a go. Shot. Okay. The back one's good. Oh, wow. Single carb. Oh, that looks proper. So, you know, these have torsion bars. And the torsion bars are, are held together with sheet metal. And when that rots... A subframe jobby, isn't yep, it? Yep, yep. <clears throat> This is an interesting thing here, look, see this. This may look like your common or garden water tap. Actually, this tap, you turn off in the summer so you don't get any heat coming through, and then you open it in the winter to allow the water to go through. Not a lot of people know that. Hmm. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Oh, this one broke free, I think. Again, one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, fresh air, evil breathe. breathe. One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> so we've just dragged Mabel out of a building that she's been in since, well, for the last 20 or 21 years. It's out of gear, the emergency brake's off, but I think all the years it's sat with the emergency brake on, the brakes are frozen in the back, so three wheels are rolling, but one's locked. But because we have horsepower here, we were able to kind of lift it and move it out. So, this is Valerie's first time seeing Mabel for a long, long time. How do you like it? Ah, uh, I want her back. Oh, it's gonna be harder. Hey, it's oh. rolling, yay! Yeah. <laughs> it's broke <Nice>. loose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this has been an amazing morning with uh, Valerie and Bernie and Mabel. Happy hunting to you. Bye, Mabel. Say lovey. Her old oh, sunglasses. Look at those. Elton, these are Elton John's glasses. That's, yeah, he's lost these a long time ago. <laughs> Think so? Yeah. All right. I don't know how this thing opens up. It's a little bit funny. <laughs>